Hey everybody, and welcome to a quick episode of Hobby Sauce. Today we're going to be talking about war engines. Is the sky falling? Is version 3 falling apart? Is it ruined already? Stay tuned to find out. Let's get saucy. Hobby Sauce! Thanks for coming back, guys. So, version 3 is out now, Kings of War version 3, and um, the first tournament, Siege of Augusta, just finished, and over 50% of the field brought War Machine spam lists, meaning that they brought over three War Machines, right? I think uh, five, six, there's one list with nine that we're going to be seeing today, because I have a battle report that I'm going to show you guys on how to beat War Machines. Uh, but what's more important is that uh, Fanatics has just been going crazy, right? Kings of War Fanatics, uh, for those of you who don't know, is a Facebook page um, that uh, pretty much anyone that's on Kings of War pays attention to, at least. And maybe not everyone, but a lot of people. Some people hate it, some people love it, uh, some people are in between. But uh, for sure, the uproaring rabble has been saying that War Engines are broken. And are they? Are they not? Let's talk about that, right? Uh, so War Engines got better uh, with version 3. They really didn't buff them much. Uh, what they did is they nerfed most of shooting and didn't touch War Machines. But what they did do to War Machines is instead of giving them one shot, they gave them two. But instead of giving them Blast D6, they have Blast D3. So in the end, the output's roughly the same. Uh, if you have a plus one, you might be getting a little bit more hits, right? But what's most important is that war engines are more reliable now. Uh, and what a lot of people did, and the Southeast specifically, which is an area of the United States that is notorious for bringing a lot of shooting in their lists, brought just a lot of war machines to kind of make up for the fact that elven archers and a few other kind of staple shooting units, uh, chariots, dark scythe chariots, and a few others are just not, um, up to par anymore they're not they're not hitting as well elves hit on fives now uh, shots were reduced points for shooting units went up shooting units are irregular now um war machines or war engines on the other hand didn't just stay the same they actually got more consistent so that's why we see a lot of that and a lot of people are saying some of these lists are crazily crazy difficult to beat there's no way to beat them um, or uh, other more mannered people that also don't like it are saying that maybe there are ways to beat them but it's just not fun to play against more engines uh, well what i did today is i got one of my buddies to play with me on ub we didn't have these models or i would have done it uh i would have done it with the models but we just didn't have the model so we went ahead and played on universal battle and uh we used george o'connell's list so george o'connell was on facebook talking about his list before siege of augusta and after he's made a lot of splashes specifically yesterday on on fanatics um and that's uh love you george there's nothing no hard feelings here i used your list because it's been so public um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a battle report of uh, the ogre list that I normally run for version three. I did nothing different to my ogre list. And if you don't believe me, listen to the counter charge ogre review episode where I give this exact same list, uh, when they asked me what kind of list I would bring. And I ran it against George O'Connell's list. Now, this isn't going to be your normal battle report. This is going to be quick. This is going to be uh, a one take shot. So forgive any flubs or us or whatever. Uh, but we're just going to try to go through this quick and kind of see how we're going to handle this, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the lists themselves. Let me go ahead and put myself over here. This is George O'Connell's Goblin War Engine list, um, and he posted this up on Facebook. I made one minor alteration, George, and that's just because uh, you had Duelist on your king and it wasn't going to be helpful against me, so I just gave you a little boost here. Uh, just because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want that to be unfair. I, I picked ogres because I normally do, but still, I, I just made that change. So, uh, goblin rabble regiment times seven, goblin rabble horde times three, big rats thrower times three, mob pup launcher times three, goblin blaster times three, wing it times three, and all three of them have the spotter upgrade. In George's original list, he only had two, but he used the extra ten points to pick up duelist for his king, which isn't necessary in my list because it wouldn't work on literally any of my drops. Uh, he has three bangets, one with the ukulele of insatiable darkness, and that is horribly misspelled, one with the inspiring talisman, one with fire oil, and then a king with Jareth's pendant, which gives his ogres headstrong. He has 2,300 points, 26 drops, 27 unit strength, and lots and lots of shots. But I'm going to bring my uh, hobby sauce special, my uh, ogres hobby sauce special, um, and this is two Siegebreaker hordes, one Boomer horde, a chariot horde with caterpillar, a chariot hordes with Jesse's boots of kick-ass, uh, best item in the game. Jesse, thank you. I'm glad that your name is in the game. You deserve it. And this item 
is by far my favorite in version 3. Uh, it almost makes up for the fact that half of the items I used to use are either altered or missing. This alone makes up for it. It's such a good item. Uh, Goblin Scouts times 2. Those are the, the quick little uh, runner guys. Uh, speed 10. They basically fly. Goblin Blaster. Warlord on Chariot times 2. Flag Guy on Chariot times 2. Warlock with Boomstick. And then the Warlock with Inspiring Talisman. I have 2,300 points, 13 drops, 26 unit strength, and lots of options instead of shots, which is what's important for taking out war engines. So uh, let's take a look here. Uh, George has, let's see, 26 drops to my 13, so he literally doubles my output. And then we have roughly the same unit strength. He has a small advantage on me and with, th with 13 more drops. I'd hope he has a little bit more, uh, but we're actually almost the same on unit strength. Um, Definitely something I could overcome, okay? Uh, what I have are a lot of fast, quick units that are going to be um, hard to take down together, right? You, you're going to be able to shoot some of them down, but you're not going to be able to shoot all of them down, and that's the important thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is on Universal Battle. So quickly, we have his whole Rabble Regiment. These are the Blasters. These are the... Um, Big Rocks Throwers, these are the Maw Pup Launchers if you zoom in, which you can't here, but they have all sorts of rats and stuff on top of them. These are little gyrocopters, so those are his wingets, and then these are his heroes. He has three bangets, and this is uh, currently on Cav. We thought his king was on Cav um, when we first made this list, but this was corrected by the time the game started. These are my ogres here. I have the Siege Breakers, the Boomers, the Chariots. Right here, Chariot uh, Warlords are the tan guys. The ASB is the guy who doesn't look as badass. Two Warlocks. This one's inspiring. Uh, the one with the skull for the head. This is um, the boop, uh, the Blaster, uh, Chariot Hordes, and then the Scouts. So let's go ahead and get into this game. I'm going to give you kind of a bird's eye view. We're going to go quickly. Uh, I'm trying to keep this video hopefully under 20 minutes uh, for the whole battle report and everything. So that's... Um, it's going to give you an idea on tempo, at least here. So we're going to start off. I won the first round um, for who went first. Uh, but we did go ahead. I was just curious, right? Because that's a really big advantage. So I went ahead and, and just let him roll just just for curiosity's sake, what he thinks he would have gotten and what he would have shot at if he went first. Uh, a lot of my guys are out of range. You'll see these guys are really far back. Um, this is a 36 inch range. I can't reach these guys actually. I think this one can get that one, but it's not a mass of shots that he wants. He wants to target it all in the same unit and kill that unit. So he would have ended up shooting here and he just had an abysmal turn, um, with those shots. So he, it, in the end, it wouldn't have been a big deal if I went first anyway. Um, if I didn't go first anyway, just because of his rolls, but potentially I could lose this unit before it even begins, right? Uh, but you can see as I positioned uh, all the units that I intend to uh, run up and hunt, you know, this warlord, this guy, um, this warlord, these guys, these guys, they can't be shot. My heroes are hiding behind because they're going to be able to lightning bolt and maybe kill one or two of these. Um, they are hiding behind other units so he can't see. Uh, and what's really nasty about George's list, and I didn't realize this until we started, um, you know, if this was Kingdoms of Men, he wouldn't be able to set up this way. Or if he did, he'd be taking all sorts of cover shots. Uh, but because of the goblins, all of these, 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 and these ignore cover. They don't care. So he can shoot straight over his own guys. And if I were humans, um, he wouldn't be able to shoot at everything. Obviously, he had Cav and Giants and things like that that he can shoot, but he couldn't shoot at everything. But because I'm Ogres, I'm height 3, he's height 2, um, he can see everything. I, I So I can't hide and I'm not going to get cover. So you notice I don't set up for cover. I try to use blocking terrain because cover isn't going to do anything for me. Um, this is a Texas table, by the way. A lot of y'all use less terrain than this. And if y'all are using less terrain than this... Um, that's half the reason you think shooting is super, super good. Um, shooting in an open field is amazing, but don't give them an open field. Uh, I think the more terrain on a field, the better. Um, if I had to deal with too much terrain over too little terrain, I'd pick too much terrain every day of the week, even if I was the shooting player. It's just more fun. So just keep that in mind, too. Uh, but let's go on. I, I move up quickly. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm providing uh, a lot of threats right away. So this this is threatening, this is threatening, this is threatening, this is threatening. This could not threaten, so it's protected because I know it's going to be important later. It's completely hidden behind these uh, this cavalry horde. And this cavalry horde is really good, so it's blocking all my important units, right? This can attack. 
um, if he gives me a, an opening. He probably won't, but I mean, uh, these guys are within range. So it's um, it's got a lot of options, right? Um, and I have a lot of units that are going to be able to bust through. And the hope here is that one or two of these guys can kind of do a nimble pivot or something and get back to the juicy meat back here. Uh, and he's going to try to stop me. So he moves forward and he has all these blockers. I mean, just a hundred blockers. And then he has blasters behind him too. So this could be really nasty. And he sets up for his first turn, gets a ton of wounds on this horde and then rolls a three. Okay. So that, that's bad news bears. I mean, that's just, that's just the beats, right? Um, but the reason I really like these hordes is because they have a lot of nerve, right? So they could take 13 wounds and potentially, unlikely, but potentially shrug off a hit, which is exactly what they just did. Even if I got a waiver here, I would have been really happy because I could push past my guy, right? And, um, doing so, I would make him have to shoot me again. So something that's, this is one of the first important things with, um, with, dealing with war engines, you want to tax their action economy as much as possible. You want them to have to shoot you again and again and again. And the more shots it takes them to take out a single unit, the better. So do everything you can. Heal your guys. Um, obviously, don't heal ones that are beyond redemption. Uh, but if he, if he things, you get a good, good heal on him. And then suddenly, they actually take two, three, four shots to kill where they could have just been picked off. Bink, you know, And every shot that they're putting into that wounded unit is a shot they're not putting into a fresh unit. So you really want to tax their action economy as much as possible. Um, but I just kind of move up there. He takes these shots. Uh, he ends up not getting that, and then I come in. So uh, this is the first wave. Everything I hit here should die. Uh, this is a conservative hit uh, right here. I could have gone for the horde and gone for a crazy lucky shot, but I didn't want to do that because uh, I would have got flanked by potentially a blaster if that ended up happening. Um, he made a, this is, this was a critical mistake and, um, this made the game easier for me. That's for sure. Uh, this allowed me to get backfield a turn earlier than I would have been able to normally, um, and pick up a unit at the same time. So that gave me a lot of action economy, right? I would have had to have spent my whole turn getting this guy back here. He would have repositioned here. I would have had to have fought past it. Um, and because of this, he, it really puts him out of position. So that's, um, that was unfortunate for him. Uh, but that was open for me. I come in here, I come in here. I have to double charge this because of the way it ends up working out, which is, uh, it's fine. It's not a big deal. I'm hopefully can bust it with two of these guys. Right. So, um, at the end, I end up, well, I take a lightning shot into here. I get pretty lucky. It's nine shots and I get, uh, five wounds. So that's, that's pretty good, right? Um, and I end up taking it out, and then I drain life. Excuse me, I didn't do that. This is important. That's more that action economy I'm talking about. I drain life here, so I shoot four into here. One, that puts more wounds on this thing and maybe makes it to where this thing can bust it, right? But more importantly, and this is going to be something you're going to see this whole game, um, this unit, I'm going to try to keep alive as best as I can because he's really going to want to shoot it. One, it's scary as hell. Two, um, it's a unit that is kind of on death's door or at least looking bad, bleak, right? So he wants to shoot it. But if I keep healing it and removing sources that can shoot at it at the same time, um, that means that his shots become less effective, which means I can get lucky again and keep it around. Um, and even if I don't, again, it's units that are going into a wounded unit that should be dead already, as opposed to in a unit that isn't. So this is me reacting to what's happened on the field. The first route roll was lucky, but what's important now is that we use that um, momentum and keep it up. Uh, so I go ahead and do the drain life there. And because of that drain life, everything with blues, uh, blue tokens here were routed. Um, I ended up busting here, right? And I, I ended up getting it on exacties on one of the rolls. Then the other one was pretty far over. Brutal's just an amazing roll, and these guys are just brawlers. But um, that drain life's important, right? That's almost like it, I double charged it with like a hero or something. Um, so that's why I like drain life. One, it deals more wounds to them, and two, it takes wounds off of me. It's just really good. It's short range. Uh, but I was able to get it on turn two because I double moved this guy on the first turn. Normally, I can't get that until move three, but I double moved him on turn one because my lightning bolt shots just weren't going to be very good, and I preferred to just keep him alive. He would have been out in the middle of, uh, you know, a, a, a firing lane, and instead I just kept him safe and then drain life, which I think was really important for this because we need to start healing as fast as possible because that's something we need to keep this unit alive. I only have 13 drops, right? 
Anyway, I get three kills here, and uh, by the end of it, I'm looking pretty good, right? I already have a unit that's busted through, and obviously it's going to take him many turns to kill this off, but every turn, that means that's less shooting I have to deal with, right? I have to endure less every turn, which is good, because I'll be able to take less every turn as I get peppered. Um, we end up wavering this, so this is a quagmire, and that's exactly what he wants, um, and I don't see it really. He did a great job here because that Warlord is totally blocked. It's going to take me turns and turns and turns to get through this. These guys come back uh, so they don't get flanked by this. And we go to his turn. So he takes some shots and um, he charges in like this. You can see he's just using blocking procedures. He's putting bodies up here. He didn't want to bring this in, but he had to because if not, he would have gotten flanked by the boomers. But because he had to double charge it, push these guys over um, so they were out of boomer range. Uh, he charges basically into everything that he can't handle, and then he focus fires on my boomers, which is good because these guys are uh, starting to look at a free lane. All the blockers have been used, uh, so he wants to go this way, right? Um, <clears throat> so it was, it was a good it was a good call. He did take a little bit of a gamble here because this had to get within 12 inches um, to hit, but he was hoping between the tag, this thing can, he tagged it, so it became elite. Uh, all shots at it were elite. That's the spotter rule for the goblins. You can look at that on the goblin wing it, but it just gives all war machines elite, essentially. And then he just peppered, 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 peppered. And he has these bangets back here, too, at this point, that are taking flank shots um, into here. So, yeah, they're cover shots, but um, it makes up for it because the defense is lower. Uh, he really gets some serious wounds into this, ends up dealing 14 wounds to it, which takes it down to snakes, and he does not roll snakes twice. Kills that unit, and then by the end of it, it whole looks like this. So he, I got a lucky, lucky, lucky roll here. He got nine wounds to it, and he didn't. He wavered it. Uh, so 14 is what he needed to break it. I think he rolled a like a seven, and then a five or a four. I, he rolled one under whatever it took to waver it. So y'all do the math. Um, he took a shot back here. He flew his wing it over to try to take this out. These things, normally, you just sneeze at them and they die. He only got three uh, hits. He only got three shots and ended up only getting one hit with it. Uh, but since they're 9-11, that really could still get it. It didn't, but he wavered him at least, so that's good. That means they're not going to be able to loop around and help the, uh, the uh, Warlord. So he's doing a decent job at containing. I'm definitely breaking free, but this is something you really have to, you have to look for those openings and grab them. In my list specifically, these guys normally I use as chaff and blockers, but because it's a war engine list, um, I just, I have a lot of war machine hunters, which is important, right? Uh, but the, the, the important thing here is I didn't build a list that was specifically good about going after war engines. I brought a lot of chaff and blockers and nimble guys so that they can get where they need to go. Normally, that's to block charges and set up these chariot hordes uh, so that they can get their kills. But in this list, it's so that the chariot hordes can tank and take all the hits while these little guys go in and kill everything. Uh, so it's important to know your list and how it works. All right, let's kind of speed through the rest of this, right? So... Um, uh, that's what it looks like at the end of my turn, and then I go ahead and charge. Uh, I'm trying to clear as much stuff as possible. Right, I'm going to use the Drain Life here again and see if I can get lucky with a single hit. They already had five wounds on them. They'll have a few more from the Drain Life, and then it's Siege Breakers. Hopefully I can bust this horde and get through. Um, that will at least draw fire away from other things because they can push forward and then suddenly be threatening uh, the crux of his army. It's like these do a lot of damage, and these do a lot of damage. If you're not familiar with Bangits, um, they have three attacks. They're Blast D3, and when they, uh, they're Piercing 1, and when they deal wounds, if they roll in 6 to wound, they deal 2 wounds instead of 1. So they can get really out of hand really fast. Uh, one lucky roll, and your guy's like, Pfft. I mean, like it's it could be as bad as like Grok and Magok with uh, Ogres sometimes. It's silly. Um, he's doing some contain over here. He's setting up for a flank for anything that tries to move forward. It could also block, and also this thing's so wounded, if this thing just runs in, it could kill it. Um, so he has a lot of different contingencies uh, that I'm trying to bust through. I end up dealing some serious wounds. I heal some more. Look at that, and that's this is more action economy, right? Um, at this point, I'm actually... I was really focused on just making him shoot here, but I've drain life so much and healed this thing so much that it's actually like okay now it's not great but it's okay 
um, suddenly it's, an, oh, it's, it's a real threat again. And I never expected that, but that's because I was just trying to tax him and then it ended up working out. And I, I played well and, and threatened in a lot of areas where he had to send a lot of guys to fight. And he spent one turn not shooting this and I kept doing it. It's like when you leave a regen unit alone. Like if you try to kill a regen unit, you commit and stay on it because if you leave it alone, it's going to, it gets out of hand really quick. Um, this unit's wavered, but this one, uh, Drain Life's here. I end up getting a kill here, get a kill here. That's expected. Kill here is expected. Uh, this thing, I caught him out of position because he was really expecting to have one more turn to before my Warlord was back here. So we ended up having to just turn this way. What he did is he basically all but ensured he's going to get a flank charge into this if I take it. And since it's on the board edge now, uh, I'm going to be stuck. Uh, I, I can move forward and kill these things, but he's going to get a flank charge every turn, and he's hoping he gets lucky, and maybe after the second war engine on the second flank charge, he can pick up uh, the warlord or even waver it. Wavering it would be essentially the same thing. Um, so this is what ends up happening. At the end of my turn, I've cleared up quite a bit. I have multiple people that have now broken through uh, these nimble guys. It's just you can't stop them after a while. You leave me a 50 millimeter hole, and I'm going to be able to get through it. Um, so that's important to uh, just focus on. I've wavered here, so these guys are doing their job. They're clearing chaff. They're tanking. They're not. These guys haven't taken much damage because he's been using goblin uh, body shields instead of shooting them. He'll get to shooting them. His hope is that something on there. His hope really was that he could clean up either my left or my right flank quickly, uh, but I'm making that difficult for him. And uh, he got it. He got a kind of an unlucky first round. If he would have picked up that horde originally, he would have been in a much better spot. So this is his turn. Uh, he's kind of wavered. He goes for the headstrong here and he gets it. So they go ahead and charge in, but they're not going to deal much wounds. 25 attacks, but fives and fives, you know, uh, you're not going to get much, uh, but it'll, it'll start whittling it down and hopefully make it easier to pick off with shooting. Uh, the rest of this stuff just blocks, right? He tries to go for the kill here, uh, but he doesn't think he's going to get it. And that's at this point, it's probably unlikely that he will. Uh, so he takes the winged here and parks it right in front because he knows this is going to die when it hits him. Uh, so the winged's here to block so that this thing can't get forward and get out of hand. Maybe pick up this rabble and just basically have completely free reign up here and pick everything up in a turn. Um, he's doing a good job containing, but you can see how it's just... You have to give a lot of threats. You have to come at a lot of angles, and hopefully one of them works out, right? Some of them don't. I got plugged over here forever. I'm never going to get out of this. Uh, but the thing is, I, I got a breakaway here, and that's all that I needed. So, uh, he gets some wounds on these siege breakers. He focus fires. He tags it with this thing right here. It jumped in. It didn't just block. It also tagged these guys. These guys had elite. Uh, the lug it or the bang it right here takes a shot and a flank. I mean, these guys take some pepper, nine hits, and he kills them. Uh, so, I mean, siege breakers aren't piercing three shots. I mean, doesn't matter. So, this is still a very venomous list. It still kills. Um, I'm just saying it is beatable. So uh, that's what it looks like at the end of his turn. You can see his body shields are starting to disappear, and I'm going to charge in and get him more. Uh, this guy's just been piddling around. He's really not made for this type of list, so I just need to get some. I need to get him to trade with something that's viable. If I can get these blockers out of the field, that'll be great. Boomers can now focus on shooting this. They uh, withdrew an inch, pivoted 90 degrees, and pushed six. Uh, because they started off engaged, they could move within an inch as long as they ended out of an inch so they were able to come over here they're going to try to pick up this wing it they're probably not going to get it 13 15 nerve uh, but they can at least hurt it maybe waver it wavering it would be great um, i forgot to mention but he came in and charged this because he didn't have a great shot which i thought was a great move he disordered this guy so he couldn't heal anymore because that was starting to piss him off uh, but this guy's wide open so he's going to take a shot here into one of the uh into one of the um bang it's those guys are nasty i need to get rid of them and they are the hardest ones to take out and if i lose my uh, warlocks which i'm getting damn close to losing um these guys are going to be to the point where I, uh, boomers are the only other thing that's going to be able to pick them up um because my normal guys they'll just run circles around them they're individuals uh, and that's not something i can handle in the late game if uh, those individuals have to be picked up i don't have uh i don't have individual hunters because because i have so much uh, spells and breath weapons uh, but if you don't have that you need at least one guy running around with duelist 
uh, who can just go and kill him. Uh, you can get like 100 point, 125 point mighty hero running around on a horse with duelist or breath weapons or spells. Uh, one or the other can pick those guys up. Uh, but it's important to have that in every list. Uh, the mighty hero, if you don't have individuals to go hunt uh, or war engines to go hunt, can still block. Right. And he can still assist in charges and get a few extra wounds. Sometimes you've seen in these games how a few extra wounds matters. Uh, anyway, so this kind of ends up happening. I get a lot of kills. And by the end of the turn, uh, you can see I've pretty much cleaned everything up. Uh, I got lucky on that winged over here. Got a kill. Uh, I've wavered half of his guys. Uh, these goblins, I really expected to pick up that winget with 21 attacks, but only dealt three wounds, but they're goblins, you know. Uh, they disordered it. It's not shooting. It's wavered. It's not moving. That's a win. Uh, you can't win them all, but that was a pretty astoundingly good turn. He charges in again to this warlord up top. Hopefully he tries to get something. This thing's pushed through forward. Um, he charges into these goblins, hoping to get a pick off here. Uh, charges back into the warlord. And uh, the Bangets are running around for some quick kills. So if he could pick up this unit with the Bangets shooting here, and then this shooting at it. Oh, I guess this can't shoot at it. But um, All right, this couldn't take the shot. It's actually going to take the shot here because that's its only good shot. It could shoot at Boomers, but it's not going to get a kill. It could actually get a kill here, and this is threatening. Um, and then the Bangit here is going to try to pick up a shot here. This is a lucky shot, but um, if he can get it this turn, maybe next turn, um, something else can finish it off. Uh, his Bengets were in a position where he couldn't get them out of the way of melee uh, and get shots. So he went, he opted for shots and hoped for a lucky waiver. Uh, he ended up not getting very lucky there. Uh, he did waiver this, which I don't think was lucky. That was expected. Uh, a kill would have been a little above average, but not, not out of any reasonable plausibility. And um, this ended up only getting a single wound and they held. So that sucks. Uh, I come in and charge pretty much everything at this point. So you can see once you get through and start breaking it up and have a few brawlers in there to clear up the major body blocks, it's not terribly difficult. Pop, pop. You see, we'll just kind of speed through all this at this point. I'll just take a few times. I'm closing in. I never mentioned this, but we're playing Dominate. I guess I should have mentioned that. That's what that uh, green arrow in the middle is. Um, that's the center of the board. And then I dive after I cling up the few things. So you see, I had all the tools that I needed. And at the end, this is what Dominate looked like. So um, I want everyone to realize that war engines are not uh, impossible to deal with. War engines can be beat. Uh, and war engines can be fun to play against. This wasn't a game that I felt frustrated on. I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, I had a battle plan when I went in, and I executed it. And, uh, I mean, that's what you want to do in any Kings of War game, right? So whether you win or, or fail, uh, you can still have fun. And I, I don't want anyone on Kings of War to think, or on Fanatics, to think that the game's broke, because it's not. Uh, war engines are beatable. War engines are not um, broken. They're good. Don't get me wrong. They're good. I like this list from George. Uh, but they're not, um, they're not, they're not broke. Uh, George, let me know if you're watching this. Let me know um, how my friend did with your list. I'm not sure um, if that's how you would play it. it. It seemed reasonable to me, but I don't run super shooty lists, and I don't run lists that don't smash your face. So um, I'm not as adept at those lists. Um, but I, I hope I hope we did at least a, a little bit of justice, and I hope you don't mind the the minor tweak that we made. That was just uh, to your advantage. Uh, but everyone here, the sky is not falling. V3 is fun. War engines are good. And um, they're not broke. Okay, uh, I don't want anyone to think that they are. And I hope everybody here has a fantastic day. Get some good games in. Uh, don't think of war engine games as a game where... Uh, it feels like a puzzle to me, right? So it's a little bit different from a normal Kings of War game. But you have to figure out how to get in. You have to find those avenues. You have to take them. Uh, and it, it's a puzzle with a timer because your dudes are dying as it goes out. Uh, but I don't think I don't think it's I don't think it has to be unfun. I think you can really have fun doing this. And I hope all of you do. Uh, either play with these lists or play against these lists or just ignore them altogether. But guys, let's talk about something else on Fanatics by this point because seriously, <laughs> anything else? It's been War Engines for like a week straight. Uh, not to not to 
diss any of you guys. Just like, come on, let's talk about something else, okay? I uh, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Stay saucy. All right. Happy sauce.